When we think of World War II, we think of the Nazis and the Holocaust, Pearl Harbor in Japan, and the Allied forces going into battle against fascist regimes. We talk about how women stepped it up in the home front, becoming Rosie the Riveters, and how racism against Japanese Americans ran rampant throughout the country. But what is constantly left out of the narrative of World War II, and the years of social change that followed, is the role it had in building the LGBTQ movement in America. Now, it's no surprise that queer people have been around a long time, and they've made substantial contributions to history. And don't worry, I'll talk about those be that came before World War II in future episodes. But this was a pivotal point, because World War II, for the first time in U.S. history, brought a sense of group consciousness to the community. And this group consciousness jump-started the movement that we've seen throughout the 20th century and into the 21st. So let's talk about it. Zarrington and welcome to this week's episode of Everyone's Gay, A Look into Queer History. This week we are looking at World War II and how it started the queer movement in America. Say it's 1943. We're in the middle of World War II. Women are in the factories working. Men and women are on the front lines fighting. And they're away from their everyday small towns and families. And when they start recognizing each other, it's what they see in themselves. They're all a bunch of homosexuals. Now don't get me wrong, there were tons of straight people in America at this time, but there were also a ton of gay people. And as women gathered in the local bars next to the factories, or men and women who served drank and decompressed in the barracks, they discovered each other, and they discovered themselves. And what they started to realize is that they were in these major port cities, or even halfway around the world in Europe or Japan, and everything they had been told in their small towns and everything they try to rep repress in their lives, other people had been doing the exact same thing. So you have these people that begin to see that what's inside of them, they're not alone in those feelings. And while it is still negatively viewed by society, other people are going through the exact same things they're going through. And that's monumental. So while this is going on, the military starts freaking out because they see homosexuality as a threat. Now at this point, being gay is not just viewed as a sin by the religious community, it's also illegal and viewed as a mental illness. So it became a mil major military law to weed out homosexuality. And this started in the beginning when soldiers were screened before being accepted into service. They were asked during their psychological exam, because homosexuality was viewed as a mental illness by the APA, if they were a homosexual. If they answered yes, they were immediately denied from service and risked their families and friends finding out. If they answered no, they made to monitor the, all of their behavior and parents to ensure that no one would be even suspicious that they were gay. Now, all it took was for one person to say that they suspected you of being a homosexual and then you were discharged. No evidence, no trial. Just one person. And this person could have been like someone you pissed off. And they say, yeah, they're gay, kick them out. That's all it took. So by the end of the war, 9,000 Americans have been discharged from the military on homosexual charges. But these discharged soldiers didn't wanna go home to a family who saw them as a disgrace. So they stayed in the port cities. And so did the homosexual soldiers who had not been discharged. And the women who worked in the factories, they just got a new sense of freedom. They didn't want to go back home to be married to the boy next door. So they also stayed. So these big port cities, San Francisco, New York, Los Angeles, which you may notice become huge names in the gay movement. These port cities become gay hubs. They become unorganized, but internally recognized gay communities. 
So that's a brief overview of how the military, an organization who historically and continuously discriminates against queer people, brought the gay community in the United States together for the first time. That's some irony for you. Thank you for tuning in this week to talk about World War II and its impact on the LGBT movement and community. Next week, we're going to be going over the Mashing Society and the Daughters of Elitists, two organizations that come as a result of the impact of World War II. So make sure you come back next week. For now, I'm Alexis Arrington. Thank you for watching Everyone's Gay, a look into queer history, and I'll see you next time. If you like what you saw, make sure to hit that like button below and subscribe. Still not sure? Well, here's a cute puppy.